Hey guys, I'm CG Smoothie, and I think I've made it very clear in my videos how much of an influence Pokemon has had on my life. My first game was black and white. I love the original art style, blah blah, if you've seen a couple of my game dev videos, you know all of that. I've seen videos by other creators in the past of creating their own custom Pokemon, or as they're colloquially known as, Fakemon, like True Green 7's videos on that very subject. I've always been interested in those kind of videos. In fact, in one of my old channels back in 2016, I used to make fusions of Pokemon and Alolan forms. This was before we knew regional forms were going to be a staple of the series. Those have always been fun, but while I do have Photoshop ability, I'm not that great at digital painting. So I decided to put a custom spin on this format. Instead of doing the Ken Sugimori art style rendering of my ideas, I would go to my favorite game in the series, you already know it, Pokemon Black and White. In this video, I will make three new Pokemon and give them an idle animation in the same vein as the 5th generation's idols. Without any further ado, let's get into it! It's not even October yet, but immediately I wanted to make a spooky Pokemon. Another one of my favorite things growing up was learning about all sorts of mythology from cultures around the world. I grew up at the same time as all the Percy Jackson and Kane Chronicles books, so I learned about all the myths. I also listened to the Myths and Legends podcast during so many road trips in my teenage life. I also spent a lot of my vacations going to Disneyland as a kid, so my first idea for this Pokemon was a haunted house. That seemed a little bit boring, so I thought a nice spin on that idea would be a haunted birdhouse. I drew a birdhouse with a Trevenant-like eye and the peephole, and with a nail much like the animation for the ghost-type move, Curse. The eyeball in the peephole immediately reminded me of Baba Yaga's house and folklore. Baba Yaga, the witch. They tell stories to children to frighten them. I also played all these CD-ROM games when I was a kid, and in one of them, Baba Yaga was in it, and that's the only thing I can remember about it. I'll try to put a screenshot here if I can find it. Basically, it's like an evil living house on chicken feet. I thought that was another great source of inspiration for this Fakemon idea. So I added some birdly appendages to the birdhouse and called it a ghost flying type named Vogel. The etymology for the name is based off of the German word for bird, Vogel. Vogel. And the paranormal creature, the ghoul. To make it a Gen 5 kind of animation, I rendered it in pixel art and then segmented it to be able to animate all the moving parts on their own. So here's the final animation and Pokedex page. Fogel, the haunted house Pokemon. Fogel plant themselves in trees with their nails in order to lure in unsuspecting flying type Pokemon. They often get confused and nail themselves to Sudowoodo instead. Skarmory often faint local Vogel to protect smaller flying types. I imagine Fogel would have a particularly close rivalry with Hoot Hoot because of their shared singular leg and Hoot Hoot love to nest in tight spaces as shown in new Pokemon Snap. Fogel is about 20 inches tall and weighs 5 pounds, just tall enough to ensnare any of the starting bird Pokemon. This next Pokemon was the last Pokemon I designed, and I was in a bit of an idea slump when I started out designing it. I have more ideas for future videos, but I must be really in the spooky mood because two of them are ghost types, and I didn't want this video to be completely shrouded in ghosts. In proper true green fashion, I took a walk around my neighborhood and stumbled across these seed pods that kinda look like pea pods. I thought it might be fun to make a pea Pokemon. I had a couple ideas, like a grass electric type with a name that went off of the sugar snap pea variety, like sugar crackle or something, but I didn't know how to incorporate that into a design without making it look like Hisuian Voltorb. So I went with the tried and true method of just calling it ESPs. For some reason, I found out after, a couple psychic Pokemon just put ESP in their names, such as Espeon, Esper, and Mesprit. In fact, the psychic type in Japan is called the Esper type. For SPs, I went with the psychic connection between twins thing, but with triplets. There would be three Ps, and one would be the most powerful. That one would create a psychic barrier around all of them, and that would be the pod. It's sort of like a solosis thing, but with three bodies. The end of the pod is like that because one of the Ps is asleep, so the psychic energy is leaking a little bit. Here it is. Espies, the pod Pokemon. The moment one of the Espies in a pod awaken, it creates a psychic barrier around its siblings. Researchers call this phenomenon a Psypod, 
Many think this Pokémon is closely related to Execute because of their shared abilities. SPs are 3 feet long in total and weigh 6.4 pounds. Last but not least is my favorite creation on the list. I found it weird how the Galar games, with a region based on the United Kingdom, didn't have very many references to Ireland or Irish culture. Of course, the main Irish thing is leprechauns, and while Galar did have Impidimp, a generic imp is not really the same as a leprechaun Pokemon. This one was quite hard to pull off. I wanted it to be a smaller Pokemon, as leprechauns are known for being wee folk. I also wanted it to look like a leprechaun without it wearing clothes. Because Pokemon don't really wear clothes, they just incorporate clothing into their design subtly, like with Gardevoir or Cinderace. I couldn't really subtly work in a bright green top hat into the design, so I decided to make a green impy humanoid with red fur. A nice way to make the hair to work was in the shamrock, or the clover also closely associated with leprechauns and St. Patrick's Day. I made the leprechaun's hairstyle a four-leaf clover shape wrapped around its head, and that acted as a hairstyle that honestly looks pretty good. Writing the script, I realize a cool concept could be if this was like a Poltegeist scenario, where there was a normal form and a much rarer but not necessarily shiny form like the authentic Poltegeist. You could have a much more common form of this Pokemon without the beard or the fourth leaf of the four leaf clover, and then a four leaf variant which would be much rarer just like clovers of the real world. I also worked in the pot of gold aspect of leprechauns into the design, adding in Meowth's coin which I worked into its dex entry. Meet Scamrock, the Leprechaun Pokemon. Scamrock are known for their deceptively authentic looking amulet coins. It's been said that if Scamrock gets their hands on Meowth, they will stop at nothing to pry off the real deal. I think the idea of a Pokemon who goes after Meowth so much because of their golden coins is extremely funny. It would give credence to the idea of Galarian Meowths having a much duller, much stronger coin on their head as it says in their Pokedex entries. Because Scamrocks would not want to go after some lousy iron coins, they want gold. And if it's harder to pull off, that's even better for the Glarian Meowths. I just love how this concept works with the Glarian Meowth lore. Heck, the Galar Gigantamax Meowth even works with this concept too. Because the Cantonian way to get away from Scamrock was simply to just elongate until they gave up, just like their executor brothers. Better hope the Scamrock give up before three turns have passed, though. Scamrock are 1 feet tall and 1.2 pounds. So, how do you like those Pokemon? I think they came out great. Like I said, I still have ideas for more Pokemon in future videos if you like what you saw today. If you did and made it this far, why not subscribe and check out my other videos? I've done some other custom things and have a whole lot of game development videos that might interest you if you liked this one. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know by leaving a like and commenting. Other ways you can support the channel are to check out the Discord, Instagram, and TikTok, which are in the description right below this video. With that, I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!